this is a um, seven-year-old young man with history of congenital cataracts, and I think you can probably see very clearly that he's got a very dense uh, uh, posterior capsular cataract, and probably this represents a posterior polar cataract. His uh, vision is poor. This is, uh, he actually has this bilaterally. So we're operating on his right eye today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm concerned that because it's a posterior polar cataract, that I may very well have to do something to the posterior capsule, either because there's an opening in the capsule from his posterior polar cataract, or that very dense plaque that you see, we will not be able to peel off, and that we'll have to do a, a, a posterior capsulectomy to do that. And so I'm making a little larger pyridomy because I may have to do a vitrectomy through the pars plana, and it'll probably will be somewhere over here will be my entry point. And if I do have to do that, it's easier to do the dissection ahead of time rather than do it once the eye has already been opened and operated on. So we'll plan ahead. Hopefully this won't be necessary to utilize, but if it is, we're ready for it. And so like any young child, he has a very um, thick tenons. So I'm going to do a, a scleral uh, incision, I should say, just slightly behind the blue-white junction. We'll be putting in a suture because this is a child and I'm concerned about eye rubbing. And so we'll just do this scleral tunnel type of incision. I'll make two side ports. Again, we may use bimanual. Now, this isn't going to require much phaco energy because it's going to be a very soft lens. Now, I'll take the viscoelastic, and this is viscoat. And so now we'll enter with the keratome. We'll enter the anterior chamber with the keratome. And I'll just get the capsular rexus started. Now remember, this being a child will have a very elastic capsule. And so we'll start once again somewhere toward the middle. And then we'll use switch to the capsular rexus forceps. And so we're going to try and make the capsular rexus relatively small. No hydrodissection. And we don't want to hydrodissect because if that is a opening in the capsule, we can blow right through the capsule by hydrodissecting. We want to be very gentle with this. And the last part that we want to do is that central area where you see the posterior capsular opacity.
So not perfectly round, but not too bad. Now, because this is very soft, we're going to try and just aspirate this with irrigation and aspiration because we'd rather than use any FACO. And so you can see I'm working out toward the edge and we'll work peripherally toward the center. And you can see it's very soft, so it's aspirating quite nicely. And you can see that lifted off. And so because it lifted off, we'll go ahead and remove it. It's, a, it's free from the posterior capsule. I think that the coaxial works better in this case than bimanual, although bimanual is not a bad technique if there was some residual um, cortex that needed to be removed under the incision or something like that. I will be very careful in polishing. Probably one of those things that you would best be just leaving alone. Try and get as much of the opacity as possible, but you can see it's perfectly intact and very clear. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do that's a little different than usual is that rather than just pull out of the eye, is that I'm going to insert OVD right now so that there won't be a collapse. And that way there's no collapse of the eye that might, if there was a weakness in the capsule, cause the capsule to break. And so now we'll put the lens in and you can visualize the lens. You should always take a look at the lens in the cartridge to make sure that the orientation is correct and that the haptics are tucked. And so I like to just rotate these lenses a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use, let me have the suture first, and then we'll go in between the suture to remove the viscoelastic. We will use a, a, a suture. This is 9 vicryl so it will dissolve on its own. It won't be necessary to um, remove it. And so again, it's easier to put the stitches in with the viscoelastic in place that forms the eye. So we'll remove the viscoelastic from the front of the eye. And then we'll come down, we nudge the lens, come up underneath and remove the viscoelastic and a little of the pigment that was there and recenter the lens. take the uh, BSS and a syringe, hydrate the uh, incisions 
Fortunately, we didn't have to use these, so there's not much. Mainly, we'll use this to fill. The question was, when should we? When should the other eye be done? And I think ideally, the next eye should be done at about a week. And I'll use one more. I'll use one more vicral to close the conch. Um, just one question: um, Why do you use two paracentesis? Because I was anticipating having to do bimanual INA if I needed it, and that's why I always do two paracentesis because I anticipate that I'm going to probably use it most often. But this case, I wasn't needed. <laughs> 